Now, in the United States, with the presidential campaign well underway, a brand new biopic, Shirley, spotlights the remarkable story of a presidential candidate and political trailblazer of yesteryear. Shirley Chisholm was the first black woman elected into Congress and the first to ever run for president. That was in 1972. Often, the only woman in the room, her campaign was met, of course, with resistance, but those doubts never slowed her down. Here's a clip from the film. I'm paving the road for a lot of other people looking like me to get elected. Brooklyn's first black representative. You're about to make history. You want to be president? You ain't no man. Maybe we should find your mother. All you got is your one vote. You sound just like every other politician. Do I look like every other politician? Freedom! Truly, you can't win. And why can't I win? I have an opportunity to make a difference. Looking forward to that one. Now, Oscar award-winning actor and director Regina King takes on the daunting task of capturing this American icon, and she's joining Michelle Martin to talk about it. Thanks, Christian. Regina King, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. You know, you've had this incredible career, Oscar winner, Emmy winner, actor, producer, director, all the things. What made this the project that you wanted to do at this time? Why this project? Why now? Well, um, it kind of worked out that the now uh, ended up being perfect timing. But my sister and I, we started our, our production company um, about um, 15 years ago. And when we started, we were you know, just talking uh, with each other about what stories would we want to tell, what stories would Royal Ties put out in, into the world. And Shirley Chisholm was one that kept coming up for both of us because we both had experiences with other people that did not know who Shirley Chisholm was. And we just felt like she is so much a part of the American fabric. How is it that no one knows who she is? And um, it seems though everyone should know. And to think that, um, and, and I'm speaking of, of a lot of Black people um, uh, not knowing, uh, we felt like this is a story that we, her story, we need to uh, tell. And um, as we started doing our research, she's so interesting and so fascinating and 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 has lived so much life it's like how can we get it all into a film how did you know about shirley chisholm because as you pointed out a lot of people don't know about her i didn't know i learned about shirley and just a, a, a touch of, of shirley during black history month luckily i got a teacher who maybe I was may have been in the third grade, fourth grade, who felt like Shirley Chisholm was an interesting person to talk about. Um, I don't know about you, but when I was in uh, elementary school and in junior high, Black History Month, you have about two minutes a day for a different, you know, Black person that's done something um, great. And I got lucky one year where Shirley, you know, got two minutes on that day. And uh, from there, my mother allowed us to have the opportunity to know more about her than that she was the first uh, woman, Black woman in Congress. That's what we, what I learned in that class that day. But you know, then she told us about um, the her running for president, and that I was only one years old when it happened. <laughs> and so, uh, so yeah, that that that. That's what made us familiar and make, made her name stick in our minds. First Black woman elected to Congress, first African-American person, first woman to run for president on a major party ticket. You know, Jesse Jackson used to have this saying, if you're going to tell it, tell it all. Mm. Well, your film really does. It tells a lot. It talks about the fact that she was not universally loved and applauded, that she got a lot of resentment and not always from the people that you would think. How did you figure out how you wanted to play her? Because again, one of the things about the film that's so striking is you really, you kind of show the complexity, not just of being the first or the first or one of the few or the only, but also being a woman in a male space. 
How did you decide how to capture all that? You know, honestly, uh, Michelle, I think it was living more life because 15 years ago when we started out, like knowing that we were going to um, tell uh, Shirley's story, whether it was going to be a slice of her life or her entire life, um, I was not ready. I had not lived enough life. I can say that now. Then I would not have ever thought that. It, it was just you know, we're going to do this. You know, we'd, we'd even gone as far as to do a photo session with me and kind of photoshopped my head into images of her as we were putting together the package to go and get the financing for it. But I wasn't ready. And just in that 15 years, um, having, having experienced more life um, helped me to understand that it was important for uh, the world to see her with all of the complexities, the, the fatigue, the loneliness. You know, when you are a person that's embarking on a journey like that, where there's no blueprint, no one's done it before you, that's a really lonely path to go down. And um, the people, Barbara Lee, we got a representative, Barbara Lee, we got a chance to talk to and um, Robert Gottlieb, who Lucas Hedges plays uh, in the film, and her goddaughter, uh, Maria, got a chance to talk to these people who really knew Shirley. And one of the things that I did take away from talking to Barbara and uh, Maria is that she always put on such a good, um, strong, you know, presentation uh, of 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 a politician, of a of a leader, uh, but they always felt like behind the scenes there was a loneliness, and that made sense to me. Seeing all of the things that she had accomplished, um, and in the spaces that she was moving, uh, she was the only one. I am running for president of the United States. Holy, that's, I mean, that's, that's right the hell on, Mrs. C. I mean, that's, that's great. <laughs> you would be the most amazing president that this country has ever seen. I mean, wow, that, if there's anything I can do to help. Well, there is. I need you to be my national student coordinator. Um, I'm just, Overseeing what? all the student organizations affiliated with the campaign in all the states oh, where yeah. I'm on the ballot, oh, yeah. putting together campus oh, rallies. Well, well, Mrs. Mi, mi, C, I'm, I, I can't. I don't like the word can't. Yes, I know, but I... Robert, this is the first year 18-year-olds will be able to vote in a national election. To get them to vote, they need to know that using their vote can make a difference. Is there anything that you really struggled with that you thought was, wow, that really is crazy? I can't even imagine what that was like. When I learned that during her run for Congress that she won, um, she was in the hospital with um, having, and had to have a tumor removed. And there was a lot of talk from her opponent that um, he was trying to, um, make her small by saying, where is she? What, you know, um, little teacher from Brooklyn, you know, we don't see her, we don't hear from her, that this is who you want to represent you. Uh, and she never uh, spoke about why she kind of had to step back from the campaign, but she pulled herself up, still recovering, came back in, fought the good fight, as she said, and won. And no one knew that, you know what I mean? No one, that was not part of her narrative. That was not part of her campaigning um, because if that was a man in that same position and he and the world knew or the district knew, it'd be like, oh my God, he is so strong. That's what we, you know, but her, it would be like, oh, the feminine things that are happening with her, we... You know, because yeah, at that girl time, problems, women problems, can't yeah, have that. Can't talk about that. Even open up a bank account without a man mm -hmm. at that time, and here she is running for Congress. That was kind of like, you know, mind blowing for me.
the film depicts that she had support from her husband, at Conrad, at least, at, you know, at the beginning, mm -hmm. but that her sister resented her. Yeah. And you show that. So I don't blame you. No, you blame my father. He had four daughters, four. But when he died, he left you the little money he had. You were treated differently. And now you think, now you think you're special. That's how Papa was with you. He made you believe things. They aren't true. He made me believe in myself, regardless of what people think. You have think. no regard? Whether or not you someone else stands with you. don't care what this campaign does you. to your friends, I can do what is necessary. That's what Papa would want? You are pushing us away over nothing. Could you talk about that? And why you thought it was important to include that? Well, I think, you know, when you are especially um, doing, telling a story that's a, a, a slice of life, a slice of history. Um, it's, I know as an audience member, I want to walk away feeling like um, I, I've learned something about the experience that I couldn't have received just when I looked it up online, you know, and um it's those little things that we call those nuance. It's, it's the nuance, you know, that that makes you feel as though, oh, I've I've I really gotten into the interior of this person that, you know, we're sitting um to to take in for a couple hours. And everything that we read, uh um, even in um uh Shirley's uh, books, uh she did not just say it outright, but she does allude to um, not having uh, the support from her mother and her sisters, not quite understanding the need for, to be Shirley Chisholm, you know, but her father did before um, he passed away. And, um, it's little moments like that that you don't you don't you can't find on the Google. You can't read about. Shirley's a strategist. She she understood that if I did write that, then now that I could possibly look weak. That that's my thought, and um, I think sh the the vulnerability was important to, to show so that you can appreciate the strength because vulnerability is a form of strength to me when you're when. when where we when we allow ourselves to show it, um, but it's not always looked at as a form of strength when for women in positions that they're operating and and dealing with mostly or, or only men. Hmm. You do show so many aspects of her life, and one of them is her mentorship of other women. I mean, she was famous for uh, as a member of Congress, giving women jobs that they had not had before. Voting's bourgeois politics. If all you're doing is outside yelling and screaming, that's all you're ever gonna be, a yeller and a screamer. You have to be part of the process. The process doesn't exist in politics for black women. You're different. I saw what needed to be done, and I did it. That's not different. That's necessary. I want you to come work for me. On your campaign? Or is that too bourgeois for you? <laughs> what do you think Shirley Chisholm might think of the current moment where, you know, our current political moment, where on the one hand, you have the first, you know, woman of color as, as vice president. On the other hand, you know, legislatively, women are fighting battles that they thought they had won. And I'm just wondering if you had some thoughts about that. Your, your film lands at such an interesting time. Yeah. You know, there's a part of me that feels like if Shirley was running for president during these times, she might have very well won, you know? Can you imagine a Shirley going toe-to-toe -to -toe with like a Donald Trump? Oh my God. I don't think it would have gone down quite the same. Uh, um, and, you know, maybe that's me just with Pollyanna dreams or whatever, but I, I do know that there's an interview that I had seen that Shirley had done. I want to say it was 
in the 90s. It may have been in the 80s, but she was asked, you know, did did uh, she think she'd see a uh, woman president um, in her lifetime? And she said, absolutely not. You know, and she said, um, but, you know, there'll be there'll be a, a vice president, a woman vice president before a president. And I just thought that was so fascinating with everything that she had, um, you know, the fighting Chisholm, everything that she had done, all that she was up against. She, and this was after she had retired, she was no longer in politics at all. At this point, she was just kind of giving speeches, but all that she had seen in that time and all those terms that she had served, she knew without a doubt that we as a people were not evolved enough to have a woman in that uh um in 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 that position and i think about when trump won and that meant that there were a lot of women that voted for him i think that she'd be disappointed you know i mean we are we're disappointed you know but I would say <laughs> that I have faith in the younger generation um, having the desire to um, become more involved, to, to activate, because we do need uh, youth, smart, young, passionate people um, to want to become involved in the political process. And I think that's one of Shirley's gifts. That was one of her superpowers to just see in um, people what they did not see in themselves and kind of ignite something in them to think bigger and and want to go out and seek the knowledge and um, think more globally, if you will. Well, congratulations on the film. Thank you. Thank you so much for talking with us about it. What do you hope people will get from it? Um, just what I was just saying. I hope that uh, people feel activated, and and I hope that again, I, I'm, I'm I, although I'm not Shirley, one of the big messages uh, that she always spoke about throughout the campaign is the importance of um, the youth. You know, we're we're making decisions for their future. And I hope that younger people feel that they meet the criteria. They have the criteria that's needed to want to run for those local offices, because that's where a lot of the decisions that are made that affect our day to day lives, you know, in your city council, your you know, your your representatives in your district, your mayors, your governors, you know, um, they, they make really huge choices that affect your day to day and um, that they that they are interested in it. They're interested in the future. That's what I hope, you know. Regina King, thank you so much for talking with us. Congratulations. Thank you.